In this short video, we're gonna walk through the difference between target and current target in JavaScript. Let's jump right in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Here, I've just got a very simple page going on. You can see I've got a button over here and I've selected it. I also have a card container that we're gonna use in a second. But let's go ahead and write an event listener for this button so we can kind of tell the difference to start with and then we'll kind of template out a couple more examples. So if I come inside here, let's say create card button and I wanna write an event listener for that. This event is gonna be a click. And whenever I click it, I should get back an event from the browser. That's what that E stands for. You can name it event, you can name it pizza, you can name it whatever you want, but whatever you name it up top there, you have to actually name it inside the function. So let's go ahead and just console.log the event.target to start with. Now I've actually got an extension called console ninja down here that should actually print this out here directly when I click. So if I click here, you can see it there. And just to make it a little bit easier, let's actually uh, show the output. So let me move this over this way. Okay, so as I click here, you can see I actually get something back. And if I were to expand this, you can see I'm getting all this. All this stuff, though, is basically just whatever I've clicked. That happens to be the span in this case. Now, if I click over here, I'm going to get a different thing. Let me collapse this. You see now I'm getting an SVG. That's because I'm clicking the SVG. However, if I click up here, now I'm going to get something else. This is now the button itself. So why am I getting different things when I click on this button? Well, that's because I'm using dot .target. Target is the thing you've clicked on. So you're set an event listener on the actual button itself, but there are several things within this. And if I were to come up here, you can see that. I've got the button itself, I've got the span, and I've got the SVG. And that's why I'm getting three different things depending on what I click. So it's very important when you set an event listener that you think about what you're wanting to click or what you're wanting to hover over or whatever it happens to be. Now in this case, I'm setting the event listener on what it's on the actual button itself. So e.target, is only gonna trace what I click on, not the thing I set the event listener against. However, if I change this to current target like this, now when I come over here, it doesn't matter where I click, everything is only ever gonna give me the button back right up here. So the difference between the two is the current target is always the thing you clicked or set the event listener on, whereas target is always the thing you've clicked. So there's not like a problem with setting this as target, but if you do, you need to make sure that that's actually what you want. And there's a couple use cases where it's definitely what you want. In this case, let's say I had this as e.target. One of the things I always like to do if I have spans and or SVGs inside of a button is to make sure I can't click on them. So I can set it like that as long as I come down here and grab uh, my button and I say if there's a span inside of this or my button that has an SVG inside of this. Either way, I wanna set pointer events to none. Now you can see if I collapse this once more, and I come over here, even though it says e.target, every time I click over here, it's only ever gonna give me the button because I cannot click on the span or the SVG since I've set the pointer events to none. So I typically like to do that just in case I forget and I set this to e.target and uh, it can kind of prevent some silly bugs that you don't think about. So we're gonna jump into an example that really shows the power of e.target here in a second, but just to make sure it's clear, e.currentTarget is the thing you set the event listener against. So it'll only ever register a click or whatever the event happens to be on the thing you set it against. Whereas e.target will set it on whatever you've clicked inside of that or whatever you've hovered over or whatever your event listener happens to be. All right, so when would you use e.target? How could it be powerful? Well, let's come in here and let me go ahead and remove this right here and I'll go ahead and close down this console log. We don't need this anymore. And what I wanna do is every time I click, I wanna add a new card to the card container. So let's grab the card container and I'm gonna add some adjacent HTML. Now this takes two arguments. This takes a position. So we'll say after, or how about this, before end. So before the end of this card container tag, I wanna then add in some HTML. Now I've just got this on my clipboard, so let me paste this in. You can see that this just is telling me a heading to and another button that says learn more. All right, so every time I click, it should an add an extra one in that section, and it does right up there. You can see, let's give this thing some more space uh, real quickly here. So right in here, let's say gap of like two rem. All right, now I gotta redo it, but there we go. Now. I'm adding all this with JavaScript, which you might do in something like React, or maybe you're just doing this with vanilla JavaScript as well. You're adding in things that weren't there to start with. Now, what would happen if I tried to set an event listener on these buttons right here? Well, if I do it in the kind of the, the main body of my script here, you're gonna see that I can't actually access these because when the script loads, they're not in the DOM. 
However, something is in the DOM. And if I come back up here, it's the card container. So I can actually use the card container and click within that and then figure out what the target is that I've clicked on. So what I'm going to do is come down this way and let's also just add a variable up here. We'll say like let number or something like this and we'll start it at one. Then what I want to do is let's come inside here and we'll say like data dash number. And I'm just going to set this to the number. Now, every time I add a card, I want to increase that. So I'm going to increase the number just like that. So number plus plus. And this needs to be outside of that insert adjacent HTML. So if I come over here and I click and I click and I click and I click and then I inspect these things, we should have different numbers on each of these. So data number one, if I came over here, this would be data number two, et cetera, et cetera. So what I want to do is actually show like some kind of alert dependent on the thing I clicked on. So sometimes you'll have things like this you add after the downloads, but you still want to be able to access them when you click. So now what we're going to do is grab this card container. I'm going to come below here. We're going to add an event listener just for this. Add event listener. This will be a click. And then let's grab the event. Now, in this case, I don't actually want to do e.currentTarget because that would only ever allow me to click the actual container, the div itself. And it wouldn't register clicks for anything else inside of here. So what I want to do is grab the e.target. So I can say e.target, and this will give me whatever the thing is I've clicked on. Now, the e.target has a bunch of properties on it. One of those things is that data dash number. So let's go ahead and grab that. So I'm going to say num. So we've got the e.target. Now I want to grab all the data attributes, which you can do with data set. And then I'm going to add whatever happens to be after the slash. In this case, it's data slash number. So I can just do data set dot number. So this should give me the number that I've clicked on. Now what I can do is come in here and just say, does this thing exist? So I'll say if num, so if it exists, if the thing I clicked on exists, then go ahead and just show uh, alert uh, num. All right, so now that we've saved it, we got to re-add all these. That's all right. Let's just add them quickly. Now you can see if I click inside here, nothing should happen because it's going to first check to say, hey, does the thing I clicked on, in this case it's a paragraph, does it happen to have a data dash number? It doesn't, so it just kind of uh, ignores all this. But if I come in here and I click, this should show me one. And there you go, it says one. If I come over here, this should show me two, et cetera, et cetera. So I have one event listener for an entire card container, but I can handle it because I'm looking at the e.target. So the thing clicked on rather than the entire container itself. So that's a use case where you might actually use this when you're adding stuff in after the downloads, but you still want to be able to register individual clicks within a parent container. Now this is called event propagation. So your events are propagating all throughout kind of the lower nodes in the DOM tree. Well, I hope that was a help and gave you a realistic scenario for how you might use this. It also gave you some gotchas when it comes to working with like clicking on SVGs or things like that if you're using e.target rather than e.currentTarget. So when should you use one versus the other? Well, typically, if you're writing an event listener and you only ever care about the thing you're writing it against, always use current target. If, however, you're using event propagation where you have like a parent container like this and you want to just register one event listener for everything inside of that and then handle it after you click, that would be a great use case for e.target. Well, I hope this was a help. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.